Although mastering Kong and realising its full potential relies heavily on understanding its interface, it's also really important to understand how its internal and external routing works. Now, we can see some of these routing parameters from the front panel. Like here, we can send our drums to separate outputs. But to really get into the detail of how these work, we have to flip Kong around. Now, hitting the tab key will show us the rear panel. And this is the same as any other device in Reason. If you're a veteran Reason user, this will be second nature to you. And even for a beginner, it's nice and easy. With the rear panel in view, it may look a little intimidating to the newcomer, but to most Reason users, it should look pretty straightforward. We've got 16 breakout outputs here. This means that we can send 16 drum sounds to anywhere in Reason. And realistically, it means that we can process these drum sounds individually through our mixer. We've also got a main audio out for sending the majority of our sounds unprocessed to a mixer or audio interface input. We've also got auxiliary send outs, so this means we can set up effects chains. Kong's rear panel also houses quite a few CV gate input and output connections. In the center here, we can see that we can trigger individual drum sounds using any CV gate enabled device. We can also use a CV gate sequencer and send CV gate modulation signals to Kong. It doesn't end there though, because we can actually open up the rear panel as we can on the front of Kong's interface. And we'll see a whole new section revealed. This is a really interesting section of Kong's routing capabilities. And it actually allows us to use Kong as an external effects unit. And we can also break out Kong's audio and interrupt its signal flow.